Want to be more confident when having business conversations? Join the Small Talk Made Simple class. In this free email course, you'll learn how to exude confidence when talking to anyone and when explaining what you do. Sign up now at thecmethod.com. Welcome to Stand Out, Get Noticed, the podcast that helps you speak and present with rockstar confidence. I'm Christina Cantors, your host and founder of The C Method Communication Skills Training. For free resources and to subscribe to the show, visit thecmethod.com. Welcome back to the show, Rockstar. This is episode 129 of Stand Out, Get Noticed. My name is Christina Cantors and I am your host. I am so excited that you are joining me this week. I've got a rock and solo show for you today. It's all about how to improve your vocal tone to sound more confident and assertive when you speak. Now, this is based on the workshop that I gave at Podcast Movement last month. I have adapted it to fit this medium, the podcast medium, as the original workshop was very hands-on and interactive. So I hope you enjoy. Now in this episode, we're going to look at some ways to improve your speaking voice so you can speak with more confidence and authority and sound like the true credible expert you are, whether it's at work or in your business, so you can influence and make a bigger impact on your audience. You'll walk away with tools that you can implement, okay? I'm very big on giving you practical things to do. And this doesn't just relate to public speaking. This also applies to you when you're running meetings at work, having conversations with your team, or even when speaking to your kids. And I hear something that intrigues me. I speak to people who listen to the pod, this podcast, and I've had a few people say to me, oh, you have such a nice natural speaking voice. I like listening to your voice. And it's I find it funny because... I didn't always sound like this. This isn't my, quote, natural speaking voice that I developed over time. Like this is actually something that I've worked on through podcasting because when you podcast, you're constantly hearing yourself back when you edit. And the first time I podcast, I'd hear myself back and I'd go, oh, do I really sound like that? And I actually adjusted my voice to make it sound a little bit I don't know, less Australian, (laughs) less nasally, a little bit more. I pronounce my words a little bit more so that non-Australians could understand me a little better. So all of these things contributed to me actually to actually changing my vocal tone and my pronunciation slightly. Of course, I'm still me. I'm still authentic to who I am. I'm just changing things up a little bit to make my communication more effective. And I I wanted to share that because I want to demonstrate that you can do it too. And I I think a lot of people believe that, oh, this is just my voice. This is how I sound. But I'm here to tell you that you can change the way you sound. You can make you can make these tweaks to improve it. And I've interviewed a couple of really talented vocal coaches on this podcast recently. One was Emanuela Grace from Find Your Voice. That was episode 124. Uh, That was called How to Improve Your Speaking Voice for More Impact. And the other one was with Kimberly Smith from Inspired to Sing. That was episode 81 called Your Voice is Good Enough. And I was so inspired by these two amazing women. So if you enjoy this episode and you want to learn more, make sure you go back and listen to those two episodes as well. And today I'm going to share with you, I've got 11 11 tools, 11 tips that you can use to make your voice sound more confident, more compelling, and to have, and so you can have more of an impact on the people you speak with. But firstly, why is vocal tone important? Many vocal coaches will tell you that it is the single most powerful communication tool that we have. Think about it as your instrument. Now, if you play an instrument, let's say you play the guitar. Any guitar players out there? I'm sure there are. Anyway, you wouldn't bend the neck of a guitar, right? If you bend the neck of a guitar, it's not going to sound right. The strings are going to be all out of whack. And it's exactly the same with our voice. Our when our muscles in our throat and our tongue and our and our face and everything get all tight and constricted when we're tense, it's not going to help us create the most luscious, beautiful sound possible. Okay, so think about your body as an instrument and the sound is produced by your body. So we want to be able to use this instrument, our bodies, we want to use it properly to create the best sound possible. 
Okay, so let's get into it. I've got 11 things or 11 tips here on how you can improve your vocal tone. Number one, breathe from your diaphragm. I want you to do this with me. Put your hand on your tummy, hand over your tummy, and I want you to take a breath in through your nose, but I want you to push your tummy out. Okay, so instead of letting your chest rise through your breath, I want you to feel your tummy push out. I know it's not the most attractive thing having a sticky out tummy, but it's important for the, this breath exercise. So you breathe in, push your tummy out, and then breathe out again. And then your tummy should go in. Now, breathing from your diaphragm here helps. And it, when you breathe from your diaphragm and then speak, that deep breath, that strong breath helps to support that sound that's coming out of your mouth. If I take a, if I take a shallow breath, I'll see if I can demonstrate here. If I take a shallow breath through my throat like this and I'm tense and I'm, and I'm clenching my throat right now, you can hear that there's not, I'm running out of air. There's not much flow there and I sound hoarse and wispy and I sound like I'm trying to force the air out. But if I take a deep breath through my diaphragm, that allows me to really project my voice and make a really nice sound. So that's number one. Number two, I learned this from Kimberly. Uh, open your mouth. Very simple, but you will be surprised at the number of people who speak with their mouths almost closed like I'm doing right now. A lot of Australians tend to do it like this. We speak with our lips really close together and we don't open our mouths and it means that we run all our words together and it's just we not we don't enunciate them very well. So I want you to one thing we did with Kim, well Kim Kim showed me in, in the podcast we did together, where she said you open your mouth and you put two fingers, like so you pretend that you're like holding a gun, like making a gun shape with your two with your two um front fingers, and you place them vertically or stacked on top of each other in between your teeth, in your mouth. So you're actually opening up your jaw. And then you practice speaking with by opening your mouth. And this way, you're, you're pronouncing your words much more clearly, right? And you, I'm sure you can hear the difference now with me speaking to you. And when you enunciate properly, people are more likely to be able to understand what you're saying. So if English is your second language, if you practice doing this, this will help you. If you are Australian and you speak with your lips really close together, this will help you too. Okay, if you are speaking to a large audience and you need to project your voice, if you open your mouth, that will actually allow the words to come out or the sound to come out much stronger. You'll be able to fill the room with your voice instead of people having to strain to hear you. So if you want to be heard, if you want to be understood, then you need to open your mouth, project properly, project your voice and enunciate your words correctly. Okay, number three, blow bubbles. So this leads on from the breath, the, the diaphragm breath. So I see a lot of people who they will trail off their words at the end of a sentence. So they'll talk like this and they'll say that this is really important and I've got a lot to talk to you about today. And they'll start strong, but then they end weak. And this is not what we want. You don't want your audience to not be able to hear the end of your sentence. It's like they're only getting, you know, half of the message. And the bubble blowing exercise is a really good way to test to see or to help you to give your entire sentence the, the right amount of, of air. I'm going to do it now. It's going to sound a little bit weird, but just bear with me. So you're going to breathe in through your nose. You're going to slightly loosely like put your lips together and then blow some bubbles out, just like you would, you know, when you're a kid when you're swimming. I want you to try this with me. Do it again. And now you see how I ran out of breath there? Like that. That means that you haven't put enough breath behind it. So I want you to see how long you can hold that bubble blowing for. And in my workshop at Podcast Movement, I actually got people to do this exercise. And then I got the people who could do it for the longest, stand up the front and do a bubble blowing competition. So give it a go. You need to breathe in nice and strong. And then as you breathe out, relax your lips. If you're pursing your lips, it's not going to help you. Relax your lips and just let the air flow out. 
All right, that was number three. Number four, ground yourself. Now, I learned this from a woman at, oh man, I can't, oh, her name is Tracy Chapman. That's right. She ran a, so she's a vocal coach and she ran a, a Q&A session at Podcast Movement around this. And one thing that she recommended, and I'd never heard this before, was to ground yourself by sitting on your hands. And she believes that when you have this mindful connection, when your body is connected to itself and you're connected to the floor and you feel grounded, it actually gives your voice more grounding, makes it sound more solid. So I'm going to sit on my hands here. I'm sitting here and I don't know if you can tell the difference with how I'm speaking, but according to her, that's that, that helps you because you can feel the weight on your hands and you feel physically connected. Now, I've done something similar before. I don't sit on my hands because I like to use my hands when I speak, but I, I've squeezed my leg muscles before. And I've used this in, say, networking situations and this is something I... I show my clients to do and I encourage them to do as well. If you're out in a networking event or you're having a conversation and you're feeling a bit nervous or you're not sure of what you're saying, squeeze your legs, squeeze your calf muscles, squeeze your knees, squeeze your your thighs and that will actually ground you and connect you back to your body which will help you to feel a bit more solid when you're having those conversations and less unstable and like floating around perhaps. I know some people like to move back and forth or rock up and down on their heels if they're a bit nervous. So squeezing your legs will help to re-ground you and give you that physical solid base to support you. And when you when you're physically supported, you'll feel more mentally supported as well. Number 5. Play with your vocal range and sing in the shower. This one's from Emanuela. Um, in, in a recent episode, the recent episode that we, uh, we did, she says to get in the shower and just play with your voice. She says a lot of us don't extend our voices that much, our vocal range. We tend to just stay in monotone here and maybe we go up a little bit, but then we come back down a bit and that's what's safe. So we just do what's safe and we don't extend out. She says if you want to add more vocal variety to how you speak, you need to play in the shower. So go low and then go high and then go fast and then go slow and then just sing, 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 sing. Just do do whatever you need to do without any concern as to what other people are going to say. All right. So forget that your neighbors are there. Just go for it and and sing and, and play with your voice. Uh, this leads into number six. Go up the stairs and down the stairs. When you're playing, I want you to practice going, so going up as in like you start really, really low and then you go high and then you come back down again and you go low again and then you go back up and then you come back down again. But it's about practicing that vocal range so that when you actually deliver a presentation, when you're having these conversations and you want to be able to engage people and inspire them. People are going to be more engaged if there is some variety in the way that you speak because if you're monotone the whole time and it gets a little bit boring, they're going to tune out. So add in some vocal range when you're speaking normally. Just add it in and see how you go. Number seven. So I just talked about going up the stairs and down the stairs. Number seven is go fast and slow. So you may practice speaking a little bit quicker in some points. And then when you need to make a really important point, you slow right down. Now you may like to practice this with a piece of prose, a poem or something. So something that's not your speech or something that you've written, use someone else's text. And then as you do that, you can play by going fast and going slow and emphasizing key words. And when you get more practice with that and it doesn't feel as weird anymore, then you can start to incorporate it into your own speaking. Okay, number eight is to use your hands. I want you to try something. Actually, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to hunch my shoulders over. I'm going to tighten up my shoulders up around my neck and I'm going to pull my chin back into my neck and I'm going to tighten up my throat and I'm not going to move and I'm going to try and speak like this. Now, I'm sure you can hear the difference between 
how I was speaking before and how I am. I feel extremely robotic and I feel extremely tense and it's very uncomfortable for me and I feel like I'm getting very boring very quickly. Um, Now I'm doing this to demonstrate that if this is how you speak normally, if you're hunched over, if you're tight, if you're clenched, it's, it will have an impact on the way that you sound. Now, I always find that I sound more energetic, more upbeat, more positive if I use my hands when I'm speaking. Now, you can't see me, but I am now gesticulating with my hands, making a lot of hand movements because I feel like that helps me to speak more energetically. Now, you may not naturally do that, and that's totally fine, but just think about how you can relax your body instead of um, hunching up and tightening up when you speak. Number nine is to play with resonance. What is resonance, you ask? It is the secret to vocal volume. (laughs) So resonance are the vibrations that create our tone through and within our mouths, our throats, and our nasal passages. Now, low resonance sounds like this, where the sound is very round, uh, very, very pleasant to listen to. It's a slightly more comforting sound and you may hear various, I don't know, aged care or funeral home advertisements using voiceover artists with this sort of rounded tone, you know, demonstrating to people that we care, we're committed to excellence, etc. An example of a high resonance is when you have a bit more nasally in the voice, as you can hear now. A lot of uh, really annoying advertisements will use this kind of nasal voice. In particular, if you're in Australia, you'll remember Frank Walker from National Tiles. He's this really, really annoying guy who does these ads where he'll go, Frank Walker from National Tiles, and it just kills your ears and it makes you want to smash your radio. This is why we listen to podcasts, so we don't have to deal with those sorts of horrendous ads anymore. So, but but the thing is, one is not necessarily better than the other. You can use them to achieve a certain result. So if you are, say, running a workshop or a meeting and there's a lot of people and you need to get their attention, it's actually better if you use a more nasal sound, so that's less resonance, to cut through. And to do this, you raise your tongue slightly. So if you think about, I mean, Kimberly Smith, who I interviewed on the show uh, about improving your vocal tone, she she suggested you practice using the word, saying the word cat. So that sound at, cat, the at in cat, that tongue lift that you can feel there when you say cat, that's what's creating lower resonance. So if I'm trying to get attention of people, I'll, I'll use that. I'll say all right, everyone, we're going to get started. You know, you can hear that difference as opposed to, okay, everyone, let's get started. Is everyone, is everyone listening? You know, it's, that's a much rounder sound and it's less likely to get people's attention. I don't mean to generalize, but Australians and Americans tend to use that slightly more nasally lower resonance voice. And I find that British people, you know, who speak with a very rounded, rounded tones, they have more of that resonance. So it depends what you're going for. If you're wanting to build trust with people and make them feel comfortable, then you might choose to use more resonance in the way that you speak. If you're trying to get their attention and make a clear point and sound authoritative, then you can use a little bit more, uh, sorry, less resonance. I hope that makes sense. Google it if you're unsure or send me an email, cc at thecmethod.com. I know this is a lot to take in, but, you know, you're smart. You'll figure it out. Okay, we're up to number 10. We're nearly there. We've got 11 total. Number 10 is the Cape Crown and Headlight exercise. I learned this from NIDA, which is the National Institute of Dramatic Arts here in Australia. They also do communication training courses, which I did a number of years ago. And one thing they taught us was if you can change your body language, that helps you to speak with more confidence as well. So the way they do it is picture that you've got this beautiful, heavy, purple velvet cape in front of you. You're going to pick up the cape, you're going to drape it over your shoulders, and you're going to let the weight of it sit there. Do this with me. Do it right now. Put that imaginary cape over your shoulders, and you're going to feel the weight of that cape pushing your shoulders down and slightly back not too much but just just down and back slightly 
Then you're going to picture an imaginary crown in front of you. It's gold. It's got jewels in it. It's all sparkly. It's pretty. You're going to pick it up and you're going to place it on your head. And you can feel the weight of that crown on your head. And you're going to push up through the back of your neck, nice and tall, pushing up against the weight of this crown. At the same time, feeling this beautiful velvet cape pulling your shoulders down and just slightly back. Now, if you can, I'd like you to walk around. Walk around pretending that you're wearing this cape and this crown. And you probably already look a little bit regal, even just pretending that you're wearing the cape and crown. The final part is to pretend that you've got a beam of light coming from your center and projecting out in front of you. If you're Australian and around the age of 30 or 35, you may remember the Care Bears television show where they have these bears that, um, was it in America too? I can't remember. I can't remember if it was Australian or American show, but these Care Bears would beam these giant lights from their bellies and they'd go, Care Bear stare. So imagine that you're doing that. So you're beaming this light onto everything that you see. You're, you've got your head pushing up against this crown and you've got your shoulders pulling down and back and you're feeling pretty damn good. Now I want you to practice, if you can, practice walking that way. Before you leave the house, put on your cape, put on your crown and beam your light on everything you, you, you walk towards. Now doing this will help to align your body. It will help the air to flow through your body properly and through your lungs and and out through your mouth. It'll help you project better and it'll help you appear more confident. And when you appear more confident, you then become more confident just as a result of that because what your physiology is doing, your mind follows suit. That is number 10. And then finally, one last one, number 11. Two, improve your vocal tone and to sound more confident and more assertive and to make a bigger impact on your audience, you need to believe that you have something worthy to share. Now, this isn't so much an exercise to do, but from what I've learned and from all the conversations I've I've had with experts on this show, it, it continues to be reiterated to me that Your mindset is the most important thing to get into the right place before you take action and actually see that result. So if you don't believe that what you have is important to share or that you deserve to be heard, it's very hard to then project and sound confident. I have a client who um, we we worked on projection quite a lot because she spoke really quietly and she didn't open her mouth very wide when she spoke. And when we dug a little deeper, we discovered that it was because she, she was afraid to speak up in case she was wrong because in previous experience had spoken up and other people had had shut her down or said she was wrong. So as a result of that, she was too afraid to speak up, you know, speak louder and clearly. So she figured that, oh, if I speak softly and I say something that's wrong, then not many people, well, no one's going to hear me anyway, so it doesn't matter. So if that sounds like you, I want you to make an effort to start really believing that you need to be heard and that your opinion matters because it does. And if someone says you're wrong, then so what? That's their problem. What's more important is that you deserve to be heard and you deserve for your ideas to be put out there because you don't want someone else having the same idea or maybe not even as good an idea, but being vocal about it and then getting recognized for it. That is just tragic and I don't want that for you. (laughs) So if you're serious about building this success mindset, then you should go and join my Small Talk Made Simple class if you haven't already. It's a free 10-day email series and it used to be called the the Confidence Course. So it's it's at freeconfidencecourse.com. That's freeconfidencecourse.com. And that takes you through daily challenges on how you can build up the confidence in yourself and and your self-belief to be able to talk about yourself and explain what you do with confidence and ease. So go check that out at freeconfidencecourse.com. And that brings us to the end of this podcast. 
I hope you have got something out of it. Maybe you've been taking notes. If so, fantastic. I know I've shared a lot, but my recommendation to you is to take one thing, one thing that I've mentioned on this podcast and implement that and see what results you get from it. And if it works, keep on doing it. And then once it becomes natural, then you can move on to the next thing. If you want a recap of this episode in written form, you can go check it out in the show notes at thecmethod.com slash vocal tone. That's thecmethod.com slash vocal tone. Okay, and that wraps up episode 129. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I really appreciate your support and love that you're joining me every week. Keep on being awesome and I will talk to you next week. My name's Christina Cantors and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed. Get Noticed.